what is going on guys Jesse here so it's been a couple of weeks since I last saw you guys hope you had a great new year and are ready to start the new year off strong because I know I am and one of the best ways to make sure that you're ready for the new year and everything that comes with that is to make sure that you have a setup that works for your workflow and is conducive to better productivity and just enjoyment so in today's video I'm gonna be going over my setup going into 2023 and hopefully by the end you'll have some ideas and inspiration for your own setup also if you're into tech or desk setups make sure you hit that subscribe button because I'm constantly checking out new stuff and I'm planning on doing a lot more setup content this year but before we get into that I want to take a second to thank today's video sponsor huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video they are the online learning community where there are thousands of courses for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills and in fact I've been a longtime user of Skillshare since way before they even reached out for this sponsorship and a lot of the skills that I use on this YouTube channel every single day, I learned on Skillshare. One of my favorite classes is by the man himself, MKBHD, on YouTube Success, where he goes through step by step on how he scripts, shoots, and edits a video from start to finish. But it's not just for people trying to become YouTubers, of course. There are thousands of courses on here with everything from mastering productivity with Thomas Frank to the basics of singing with Gabriel. So whether you're trying to make a career pivot, level up in your current role, or just trying to learn a new hobby, Skillshare has got you covered. And if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, the first 1,000 people to use that link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Seriously guys, check them out. So overall, I still definitely wouldn't classify this desk setup as minimal by any means, but compared to before, it is a little bit more stripped down than it used to be. And in general, just like before, my setups have overarching goals of being great for productivity, with multitasking, having everything within an arm's reach, while of course also being great for entertainment. Now we are still using the same desk as before though, and that is the Foley Jarvis L-shaped standing desk. Cause overall, I am a big fan of this desk. The color combo of the white top with the alloy frame just gives it a super clean and industrial look that I'm a really big fan of. It also comes with the option to put casters on the bottom which makes it really easy to pull the desk out and cable manage when you need to. And having a standing desk that's also an L-shaped desk is really convenient for a lot of reasons. Like sometimes when I just want to kick back and relax I can just lean back in my chair and use the chase as a mouse pad. And it's also really convenient for filming as well because I can still have this surface in front of me while having my backdrop be my setup. Also having it be a convertible sit stand desk means that if I wanna film stuff at different angles, I don't have to mess around with my tripod, I can just change the height of the table, which is much more convenient. The benefits definitely aren't just for YouTubers who make videos in the room though, it's also just great for people who wanna watch out for their back health. And being able to switch between sitting and standing throughout the workday really helps me stay productive and not in pain. But even though having a standing desk is great, it's also really important to have a good ergonomic chair because even if you are able to switch between sitting and standing you're still probably going to be sitting most of the time. So what I've got here is the Herman Miller Aeron and I'm not going to bore you by spending too much time talking about a chair but it really promotes good posture, has the best breathability, and best build quality of any chair that I've ever used. And a lot of you are going to complain about the price once you see it but I think it's worth it. Okay now moving on to what is more or less the centerpiece of the set up the monitor I'm using is the LG Ultra Gear 48 inch OLED monitor. And I know this might look like a TV, but it actually isn't. It's a monitor with the main difference being the inputs available and some of the software features. Now you guys might remember from previous setups that I've been using the LG 49 inch super ultra wide monitor for the past couple of years. And honestly, I loved it. But recently this monitor came on sale and I was just too curious not to try it out. And I already have a whole video talking about my experience switching to this monitor and what it's been like using it so far so if you're interested definitely go check that out I'll have it linked down below but basically having a huge screen like this as your monitor is really great because you get a lot of extra screen real estate for multitasking and it's also great for watching movies TV shows or story driven games just because of how immersive this large form factor screen is it's also just maybe not the best option for competitive games because you're gonna have to turn your head a lot to see the whole screen but other than that I've been 
really enjoying it and the actual quality of the panel is really good as well with it being OLED and high refresh rate you get those juicy deep blacks and smooth motion that comes with that. I did have to make a couple of adjustments though to accommodate for this huge monitor. The first one being this keyboard drawer slash tray. Like one of the issues with using a monitor that's this big is that when you sit too close to it it can cause a lot of eye strain and you have to turn your head side to side a lot to view the left and the right parts of the screen. And one of the things that's helped me out a lot with that is getting a keyboard tray that lets me get one to two extra feet away from the monitor and it makes a bigger difference than you'd think. I really like this one from BDI specifically though because it's kind of a drawer tray hybrid. When it's open the front can fold down to kind of form a wrist rest for you but then when you close it it can fold back up and hide whatever's in there giving it a much cleaner look than pretty much any other keyboard tray out there. The only unfortunate part though is that my mouse doesn't quite fit in the drawer though like it's just a little bit too tall and now I need to find a new mouse. And my criteria are just that it must be short enough to fit in that drawer, have a side scroll wheel, and just not be ugly. So if you guys have any suggestions leave them down in the comment section down below because I've been looking and I really can't find anything. But the mouse I'm using right now is the Logitech MX Master 3S and it makes me really sad that I have to look for a new one because I just really like this one. The shape feels great in the hand, the side scroll wheel is essential for my video editing workflow, and one upgrade they made with this year's model is that the clicks are about 90% quieter than the previous generations. And overall, I can't recommend this mouse enough for productivity purposes. Maybe not the best for competitive gaming, but other than that, it's awesome. I don't know if I would recommend the white colorway though, because it doesn't matter how clean you are, it's gonna start discoloring over time and just look really nasty. And beside that, I've got my current keyboard of choice, the Mojo 84 from Melgeek. I've become a bit of a keyboard nerd in the past year, so this changes around quite a lot. I've got a big pile of them just over there out of frame on a different table, but this one just uh, kind of speaks to me right now, so that's what I'm using. Now moving up on top of the desk, the computer powering it all is my MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 Max chip in there. I got this about a year ago, and so far I'm absolutely loving it. I maxed out pretty much everything on here except for the storage and it's got enough power for everything I do and I especially love how the fans like literally never turn on. And I've got that sitting on top of this laptop stand from Uppercase, which fun fact, was the first company to ever send me free product for YouTube, so shout out to them. But I mean, there's plenty of laptop stands out there that do the exact same thing, but I actually really do genuinely like this one and not just because they sent it to me for free. I think it's designed really well and made out of solid aluminum with some serious heft to it, so you don't have to worry about it tipping over or anything like that, which when it's carrying something as valuable as your laptop, you want to make sure that it's very solid. And underneath it, I store some stuff that I like to have handy but don't want to have out in the open, so I've got the remotes to my monitor and my speakers, and also this precision electric screwdriver from Hodo that comes in very handy for working on keyboards. If you guys haven't heard of them before, they make a lot of tools that have a much more modern and sleek aesthetic than their more traditional counterparts. I also have this much larger drill kit from them that fits my aesthetic much better than something from like Milwaukee or DeWalt wall or something like that. Anyways, back to the setup though, I've got my MacBook connected to this Thunderbolt dock from Anchor, which also has all my peripherals connected to it. That way I only have to worry about one cable going into my MacBook when I come and go from the setup. And I think if you're planning on having a laptop for your setup, a Thunderbolt dock like this is essential. And next to that, I've got the Elgato Wave XLR audio interface, and it lets me connect my mic to my computer. And the reason I chose this audio interface in particular is just because it has all the inputs and outputs on the back so that way I don't have to worry about any cables hanging around on my desk and they just can be routed behind. And connected to it, I've got the Shure SM7B microphone. Honestly, very overkill for what I need, but it's a classic and I think it sounds great. And I've got it mounted on the Elgato Wave mic arm, which just allows me to place it closer to my mouth for better sound. And while we're on the topic of sound, the speakers that I've got here are the Kanto Tux, which I'm gonna be honest, I probably got like 80% because of just how they look, which is also the reason I get a lot of the stuff on here 
clearly, but they also sound really great. But seriously, I think these are some of the most aesthetically pleasing speakers out there, especially if you're into that minimal modern look, which I definitely am. And the good thing is they're not all looks. They also sound incredible. And especially if you pair it with their sub, I think it gives you an audio experience that's really hard to beat at this price point. The speaker stands are also from Kanto, but they'll work with any speaker. And I just like them because they bring them up closer to ear level for a better listening experience and they just give them a really cool look. And honestly, other than the monitor, the thing I get the most compliments about on this setup are the speaker stands. So there you go. Okay, next let's talk about power. So I've got the Nomad Base Station Pro wireless charger. And what's so special about this wireless charger is that it's a free position wireless charger. So if you guys remember a few years ago, Apple came out with this thing called Air Power, or rather they announced this and then it got canceled because of engineering issues or something like that. Well, basically this is that. Unlike normal wireless chargers, you don't have to worry about where you place it on the mat. As long as your device is anywhere on the surface, then it'll start charging. You can also charge up to three devices at a time, which is really nice, but it does do it pretty slowly. For stuff that doesn't have wireless charging though, I've got this Nomad Universal cable that's micro USB, but has adapters for USB-C and lightning. Overall, it's very high quality, like it's made out of Kevlar and aluminum, so I'm not worried about it breaking ever, and it does get the job done like it has all the connectors I need, but there are some stuff that's very annoying about it. Like the adapters don't fold back, so they're just kind of always in the way when you're trying to plug other stuff in. And the main cable is micro USB, which is the only non-reversible cable. So you always have to do this dance to try to get them aligned correctly. For everything else though, I've got this powered grommet on the left side that came with the desk. It's got USB-A, USB-C, and just a standard household AC outlet. So between everything, I can charge anything I need to. Okay, now moving on, I have this desk mat from OrbitKey, which I really like because it's not just a desk mat, it also has some features. It's dual layered so you can store documents, which I use usually for keyboard manuals because I use a lot of different keyboards and all of them have different hotkeys for like lighting and changing volume, play, pause, and all that stuff, and it's impossible to remember. And it's also got this cable management strip at the top that you can use with the puck that they give you to route cable through so they're ready for you whenever you need them. I also have this organization box from OrbitKey that comes in really handy for storing all those little knickknacks that have nowhere else to go. And it's especially useful because it has all of these customizable dividers that you can use to organize your gear any way you need to. Okay, next I've got to have my headphones of choice on hand, which are the AirPods Max. And honestly, I think these are one of Apple's best products. Like a lot of people were roasting these when they first came out because of how expensive they were or how they looked and all that stuff, but personally, I think they sound really great. And even though they are maybe a little bit overpriced, I don't think they're as overpriced as people say. But even though I like to use speakers when I can, cause I don't like to wear stuff on my head if I can avoid it, sometimes there's just noise going on that's a little bit distracting and putting on the headphones really helps you isolate and just focus on what you're doing. I've also got my iPad on here, which is I think the third generation pro model. And I use it for thumbnails sometimes, but other than that, just like YouTube videos here and there, and just as like a portable computing machine. And I've got it sitting on top of this drawing stand from Elevation Labs that just brings it at a better angle to draw or write on. Now rounding this out, let's talk about the lighting in the setup. So on top of the monitor, I've got the BenQ Screen Bar Halo, which is honestly probably one of my favorite desk accessories ever. It lights up the surface of your desk without taking up any space, doesn't produce any glare on your screen because it has an asymmetrical beam, and honestly, I think it just looks really cool. My one complaint about it though, if I had to say anything, would be the remote is extremely unresponsive and really hard to wake from sleep. And on the back of the monitor, I have some Philips Hue play bars and a Philips Hue light strip, which gives some bias lighting. And basically, if you don't know what that is, it's lighting up the wall behind the monitor to make the difference in light between your wall and the monitor a little bit less so your eyes don't have to strain as much. And this is one of those things that I think a lot of people might think is stupid or overrated, but it's one of those things that I think really helps with setting the whole mood of the setup. I probably went a little bit overboard, like I don't think I needed the play bars and the strip, but I bought them at the same time and they're there now. Hope you guys found some inspiration or ideas for your own setup, and as usual, thank you so much for watching. Like if you liked it, sub if you loved it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.